Hi, my name is Richard Solomon. Before I came to Synopsys, I spent about 20 years doing design for PCI Express controllers. And one of the things you have to do as an architect is figure out what are the costs and the benefits of changing various parameters around a PCI Express controller. So today I'm going to take you through a tool that Synopsys offers that we call Core Consultant that will let you make those trade-offs and find out what the results are in real time in your own shop. So what I've done here is I've brought up the Core Consultant tool. And I've configured a fairly basic PCI Express Gen 3 by 4 controller using all the default values out of Core Consultant. And what we're going to do is we'll pick a pretty easy parameter to deal with, this one here, which is the simultaneous outstanding requests. And what this is is the number of commands that the controller can have outstanding to the host at a given time. Why we care about this is it controls the amount of bandwidth that we're going to get from the host's memory controller. So large number of commands, lots of bandwidth, small number of commands, not as much bandwidth. Now for the purpose of our example, let's pick something that's really ridiculously small, like 2. So all I have to do is I change that parameter from its default value of 32, I click 2, and I click down here on the Apply button. When I click on that button, you'll notice the cursor changes to this little spinny thing as Core Consultant is off doing stuff. What it's doing right now is actually generating all the RTL for our controller and building something that exactly implements what we've just told it to do. It's also going to generate a number of different reports that we can use to get an idea of what did this controller do? How big is it? Um, it will set up a test bench environment that we can use to go in and actually measure the performance of the controller and find out some of those things we were just talking about trade-offs. What advantage do I get out of having a small number of tags for size? Or what disadvantage do I get out of having that small number of tags for performance? Basically all the things that I want to do as an architect to make those trade-offs. Now you can see when that finished, we get a new screen that comes up and there's a bunch of different reports here. So what I want to do is I want to click on the RAM sizes. And that will tell me the various RAMs that the controller needs outside itself that you would implement in your design. What I wanted you to look at is there's two numbers here on the receive queue header and the receive queue data. And we can see the depth is 173 lines and 339 lines. The values themselves aren't necessarily important, but we're going to compare them to the others in a few moments. The next thing that I can do is I can come over here on the tab where there's setup and run simulations. So I'm going to tell the core consultant that I'd like to run some of the tests that are included with the controller. And for this case, what I've done is I've unchecked everything except the performance tests because I want to show you what the performance results are for the changes that we made. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to wait and make you wait through this running all the different simulations. We'll treat this kind of like a cooking show and pretend that I go over here to the oven and I pull out the uh, results of our cooking and I can show you the performance that we get out of having two outstanding tags. If you look on the screen, you'll notice there's a link ideal bandwidth and you see that's about 3.7 gigabytes per second. But notice that what we actually get out of having two outstanding commands is only just under 1.7 gigabytes per second. This is probably not going to make your marketing folks very happy. They're going to say, that's not a good trade-off in performance. So let me go back to Core Consultant and make some changes. If two outstanding commands wasn't a good number, maybe we should bump it up to something fairly large. So let's try something, oh, let's say maybe 128. So I change to 128. I'll do the same thing where I'll hit the Apply button, Core Consultant will go off, generate its new version, and we'll take a look at what the output is. So now if we take a look at the new results, go back to that same RAM sizes. Now remember we had 170 something and 330 something. Notice that the lines now has grown to 800 and 2300 and something. So we've got a quite a bit larger RAM that resulted from making that change. But let's take a look at the performance impact. Again, we'll go back to my virtual oven here, pull up the results that I generated the other day. And for 128 outstanding commands, 
Notice now I'm up to 3.6 gigabytes per second out of my same 3.7. And actually the simulation results here show you that's about 3% less than the ideal maximum theoretical bandwidth you could get. So you can see by making that one small change, we've made a trade-off between performance and area. But I actually wanted to point something else out to you. Remember that the default value we got was 32. If I change the default back in Core Consultant, and I go back to 32 tags, 32 outstanding commands, let's see what that happens with area and performance then. So I'll just go change that 128 back to the default value that it had of 32. Again, we'll hit apply, wait for Core Consultant to do its thing. Once again, if we take a look at the results, go over here to RAM sizes. Notice now that for 32 outstanding commands, I'm quite a bit smaller, still larger than only having two, went from what, 173 to 323, and from 300 and something to 800 and something. So about a third the size of having 128 tags. What kind of performance do we get out of that? What do we trade off there? Well, you can see that we do drop a little bit. So we had 3.6 gigabytes per second before. Now we're down to 3.55. So for only about 50 megabytes per second, we trade off a savings of two thirds on the RAM size. That's probably the kind of savings that you can take back to marketing and say, would you guys buy off on this if I dropped two thirds of my area to get this tiny change in performance? So hopefully this has given you a good idea of how easy it is to make and evaluate PCI Express architectural trade-offs using the Synopsys Controller IP and Core Consultant tool. You should also notice that the defaults that Synopsys provides provide a good balance between performance and cost as is, while still allowing you the flexibility to make the determination for yourself without having to plead for changes from some far off factory. Thanks for watching.